Hi, well, this is part two of our second lecture about the collapse conjecture. And we'll continue exploring the paper of Crandall about the 3x plus 1 problem. Okay, so in this part, we will prove the result about cycles of the collapse conjecture, of the collapse map, sorry. And following my notes, this is theorem 9. And theorem 9 uh, um, is a condition on it bounds, it lower bounds uh, the length of a possible cycle. Uh, by using the fraction, uh, the continued fraction expansion of a certain number. So let M be the minimal, be the minimal element uh, in a non trivial. Now, trivial, I mean, is not uh, the cycle 1, 2, trivial cycle of C of length K. Of length, sorry, length J. Use the same. Use the same letters as in my notes. Then, um, J is larger than the minimum between two quantities. And this here is natural log of 2. And this is the minimum for uh, um, all N greater or equal than zero, okay? Okay, where Pn over Qn is Sequence is the sequence. Let's say n greater equal to zero. Sequence of convergence of the continued fractional fraction expansion. of the number we defined as gamma minus 1 in the previous lectures, which is just uh, log on base 2 of 3. Okay, so that's the result. So this is another one of these results that we can explore. Uh, it's nice to explore numerically because it's easy, easy to test this numerically and it gets you to results like there is no uh, other cycle of length less or equal than 250,000 uh, other than the 1-2 the cycle. Okay, so it gets you, it, it allows you to prove things like this. And we will do a numerical class, probably the following uh, lecture will be a numer numerical lecture um, about uh, these things and also the other things from uh, uh, Deha's paper and um, some other uh, uh, things. Okay, so the goal of this class is just to prove this result. It's not that hard to prove this result, but uh, first, before we prove it, let me make an observation. So let me make an observation. So. 
Um, so this thing here is bounding by the low the length of a cycle given the minimal element. Okay. So um, what we can do is um, is the following. Uh, we could you could ask yourself, well, is is there finitely many cycles of a given length? And that answer is yes. And if I uh, uh, if I borrow the notation from lecture one, we know that uh, n equals c k of n if and only if n equals lambda k of n times n plus whole k of n. Okay, and if you recall the definitions of the functions whole k uh, and lambda k, you can deduce that there is, there must be some vector epsilon naught up to epsilon k minus 1 such that uh, you just uh, move this lambda to this side and you get 1 minus lambda which would be this term here and it equals whole k and whole k you can compute it will be equal to this term here So, so you realize that if n is in a cycle of uh, length k, um, then you conclude that n must satisfy this equation, okay, and for every vector you put here of zeros and ones, so this is a vector of zeros and ones. So this vector is nothing but the parity of the iterates. So epsilon naught is the parity of n, epsilon 1 is the parity of c of n, and so on. Um, and then, well, for each of these vectors, you get just precisely one solution for this equation, one possible solution. Um, if this, this defines an integer n, then you get this, a possible solution. So you conclude that there are at most two to the k candidates for n, and therefore there, there is at most two to the k cycles of length k. So, therefore, there are at most two to the case cycles of length k. Okay. Um, yes, so um, so and what this theorem is saying is that well you know these numbers qn and you know these numbers pn exactly. So you can find this sequence. And so suppose you have a certain cycle with a minimal element m. Okay, then you compute this minimum. Um, Sorry, what I mean is really that uh, uh, G is greater or equal, is greater, sorry, uh, or equal uh, than um, 
She's get rid of this for all and great people. That's what I mean. So you, that's what I mean. So what you have to do here is to take the, the max of all these quantities among all n's, and then you have a lower bound for 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 j. Okay. So for every n, you make you compute this quantity, and the largest of these quantities will be a lower bound for the size of the cycle. Okay, so how can we prove that? Yeah. So one one thing you have to realize is uh, the following, and I will give you. So that will be lemma 13 in my notes. And then we leave this lemma as an exercise for you, as a problem, which is the following. Um, if n belongs to the trajectory of m, um, so let me, so, so let m uh, B some B of A J A one of N uh, B odd. Okay, so that means that um, um, that N uh, N is in the J position. That that is the same as to say that uh, N is in the G position of uh, the trajectory of M. Okay, so you have trajectory of M is just S of M, S square of M, and so on. So in the J position, you find N. Okay. Okay. Then you can show that um, two to the a j times m minus three to the j times m equals the sum equals one two to the minus one of two to the a i three to the j minus i minus one, where a naught equals zero, a one equals a j, a two equals a j plus a j minus one, dot dot dot, and finally a j minus one is uh, the whole sum. It's just a j plus, um, oh sorry, finally a j is the whole sum, j plus a one. Okay? And conversely, that's the, this is also the case. And conversely, if there is a, a sequence of numbers such that So it's that uh, star holds, let's see. Then uh, n belongs to the trajectory of m. Uh, Size is not hard to do. Just those uh, standard arguments by induction, and what just so you have to realize, so so that we put as a problem. But one thing you can realize is that 
Well, the, this part, the first part is easy to show. Um, because you're just iterating applying induction argument to see that that's actually how it's true. And the, the converse part is just you define the AIs uh, like this, and then you conclude that uh, it must it must be true that uh, it must be true that these guys here that existed are exactly defined by this. Okay, so I will leave this as a problem. It's not. Uh, it's not that hard to show. Okay. Um, in particular, I conclude the following: the observation. In particular, if if you have a cycle, so if m is greater than one and m belongs to the trajectory of m, okay, and uh, in the j position, so it appears first in the j position, okay, um, then by the lemma, uh, so this happens, sorry, this happens if and only if We have this equation. For some integers zero equals a not less than a one, less than less than a j. But there must be some integers, capital A such that this equation uh, holds true, okay? So this is, a, so the lemma is saying that if you want to prove that there are no cycles, you have to show that there is no solution to an equation like this other than uh, the trivial one. I mean, with n equals one, you can trivially solve this, but other than this, you don't have a solution, okay? Uh, um, because if m equals one, then m appears in the zero position, in the uh, uh, position j equals. Um, um, yeah, well, all the, this equation only makes sense really for uh, um, m greater than one. So you have to show that um, uh, this can never hold true. Um, uh, if m is greater than one, so for, for that, so, so showing that this never holds is exactly the statement that the coax map. Uh, I'm using the speed up coax uh, map, the, the map s, but you, it's the same thing. You can it's, it's the same to say that the coax map doesn't have any cycle. So either it converts, it goes to one, and once you iterate it definitely, or it goes to infinity. It can never be trapped in the region. Okay. If you show that this can never be true, okay. So what uh, Krandau will try to do here, I mean, my point of view is just to use this idea to bound uh, the number, of the the length of the cycle in some way, and what he is trying to do here is to uh, uh, realize that um, there is some number of theoretical connections here about solving uh, exponential diophantine equations, okay? So that is uh, his uh, um, idea here behind. So first we will prove uh, uh, a certain lemma that will help us to prove the main result, okay? So let me raise the board. So before we prove the main result, I will prove a auxiliary lemma
which in my notes is lemma 13. Okay, so if m uh, is greater than 1 and is the infimum of tm, so you start with m and then suddenly m shows up at a certain another position and appears and appears first in position J then so if M is the minimal element of a certain trajectory uh, uh, a certain cycle that's what I'm saying uh, of length J then M is less than J 3 over 1 over M to the G minus 1 divided by 2 to the I AJ minus 3 to the J Okay, where AJ is the sequence that must exist uh, satisfying um, uh, this condition. And uh, what you can show here is that this sequence here is, uh, so maybe you should put in the lemma here as well, that there is a unique sequence, okay? So there is a, so, um, so if that happens, there is a unique sequence of A's and, and, and zeros uh, and J's because they will have to be, well, it's unique because they will have to be given by this, okay? So there is a unique sequence that of, of integers, increasing integers such that satisfies this condition and for the last guy is exactly this last guy here. So this AJ here is completely defined in terms of M. So AJ, if you want, AJ by our, by our definition is just uh, um, the sum of e all the e so from i equal to one up to j which is the parity of m plus the parity of s sorry not the parity but uh, the the exponent plus the, the exponent of s j minus one over m one okay by definition uh, of the ages. I recall that the ages is just the partial sum backwards of the sequence of the little a's. Okay, so this will be the little a's. Okay, so proof. Okay, so we know that m will be less than si of m for i equals 1 to j minus 1. Okay, because it appears first in the j position, so that's going to happen. And as j will be, as j of m will be equal to m. Okay, so we know that m is strictly less than as i of m. And what is S i of m? It's 3 S i minus 1 of m plus 1 divided by 2 to the e of this guy, S i minus 1 of m. Okay. Okay. But I uh, will define a, uh, like I did here, a i equals the exponent of S j minus i of m. So if I define it like this, this guy here is uh, a j minus i plus 1. Okay. But then we'll replace this 1 by something larger than 1, okay, which is just uh, s i minus 1 divided by m, because I have this. So I'll replace this by 3 plus 1 over m 
si minus 1 m divided by 2 aj minus i plus 1. Okay. So now I can uh, uh, iterate this inequality because I know that this is less than this. Now I'll apply the same, the same condition for this guy. So, so this will be less than 3 plus 1 over m squared s to i minus 2 of m. And here will be 2ij minus i plus 1 plus ij minus i plus 2. And you can keep going until you get m here, until you, until you get, um, uh, until you go back here to m, okay? So finally, um, you will get that this is less than 3 plus 1 over m. So apply it twice here. So if I put i here, we get i here. So we get i m and the very last one is uh, um, um, Yeah, so, so you, you will get up to, uh, uh, let's say you put here i minus 1, so you put something like i minus 1 here, so here has to be s of m, and here is almost all the sum, it's 2 aj minus i plus 1 plus dot 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 up to aj minus 1, because I'm replacing, yeah. Uh, I'm replacing these two here by i minus 1. Yep. And now, if this will be the last step, then you do one more time, which is, uh, I know that um, 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 I know that s of m by this thing is equal to 3m plus 1 uh, divided by 2 to the uh, aj um, two to the aj, then you apply the, the same inequality here as I did before, and then you get two to the aj minus i plus one up to aj. But that number here is exactly our definition of ai. Okay, so we can and uh, times m. Sorry. Okay. Because this inequality, this is an entity holds for every i up to, uh, from 1 to j minus 1. Uh, so if I apply for 1, it's like exactly this one. Okay, so this is ai, so there is m on both sides, and then you conclude that 2 to the ai is less than 3 plus 1 over m to the i. Okay, so you give a bound for 2 to the ai. And now we go back and use, maybe I can do it here, now we go back and use this identity here. Okay, so what's, what this identity is saying is that uh, m equals something, so m uh, equals, there is a quotient, so let me, let me maybe do it like this. Uh, 2 to the aj minus 3 to the j times m is equal to this sum here, but then 2 to the ai is less or equal than this, and then you just replace, oh, this starts from a 0, so i from 0 to j minus 1, and then replace by the bound we just did, and then 3 to the j minus i plus 1, and then you replace this 3 by 3 plus 1 uh, over m, which is greater than this, and if you replace, there will be a cancellation, then there will be just, uh, there will be just this guy here, 3, uh, to the, oh, this is minus 1. Um, and then there will be just the sums of 1s, that, that will get you the j. So this is less than j, 3 plus 1 over m. 
to the j minus one. Okay, this is just a simple computation. So nothing fancy. Okay. Okay, so basically this is just an auxiliary lemma. Now you have a bound that works for m. M, if it's a minimal element, that it must satisfy this condition here. But we still have a, a, that, a dependency that we don't like, which is this aj, which has to do with the, the speed of collapse map. You, you want to lose this, so you want to use something else, and here's the something else. And that's, so let's prove the main result now. Okay, so let me erase the board. So first we will need some facts about the fraction, uh, continued fraction expansion of log of 3 in base 2. So I'm not, I will not prove this to proof of theorem 9. So basically theorem 9 is saying that j is greater than something, which is the minimum of qn and something else. Okay? That's the theorem we want to prove. Okay? In the same conditions as in the, in the previous lemma, we have an m, which appears in position j in the trajectory of, uh, of m. Okay? So first, let me, let me state some facts. The facts are that gamma minus 1, which is the log of base 2 of 3, has uh, the following uh, partial uh, continued fraction decomposition. I don't know why, why I keep saying partial. I don't know. So let me call this. Um, um, maybe that's not a good letter. Let me call this uh, the BLs. Okay, this sequence. So the convergence, you can find the convergence uh, PJ, uh, um, let's say P, let's say PN over QN. You can find them by recursion, which is the following P naught equals A naught. Q naught equals uh, one, Q minus one equals one, Q minus one equals uh, zero, and then you have a Pn equals uh, Bn, Pn minus one plus Pn minus two, and Qn equals um, uh, Bn. Let me just double check. Qn minus 1 plus Qn minus 2. Let me just double check this in a moment. You can find them recursively, like this, and then um, there are two facts you can prove. So you can show one is that Pn minus Qn and gamma minus one is less than x minus y gamma minus one for every x and y positive integers with y less than qn. Okay, as long as you're putting a denominator which is less than qn, the best approximation is to choose x uh, uh, equals pn, the numerator equals pn. Okay, so that's is this statement. And the second statement that, well, how good the, the approximation is or not, uh, so this is always greater than, okay? 
So, um, yep. To, so as long as you have a, a denominator which is less than qn, you can never approximate as good as this number. Okay. So in particular, we can do some things for this. Okay. So note that we have an expression like this, which is exactly here. Okay, so it would be nice to bound this thing by below. Okay, so suppose we have this in particular if y is less than qn, is positive, and less than qn, then, well, this is 3 to the y, and 2 to the x minus y, gamma minus 1 minus 1. Okay, and this is greater or equal than 3 to the y. Okay, so now I'm just using the 2 to the something minus 1 is greater or equal than log 2, uh, the something. This is minus 1. Okay, so I'm just using this. So this is just, uh, I'm using here, that moduli of 2 to the z minus 1 is greater than equal to log 2 um, times moduli of z. And then this I can bound by the previous thing. So this is greater than 3 to the y log 2 divided by qn plus qn plus 1. Okay, so now we can continue on the next board. So I can keep this inequality here. So we know that this happens. So I have two things. Well, remember that my bound is j is greater than the minimum of things. So I actually just need to show that if j is less than qn, then j is bigger than this other part here. Okay? That's why the minimum is there. So now we can assume, so let's assume, that uh, j is less than the qn. So I do know that m is less than this quantity. That's because of the lemma we showed. Okay, now let's use the bound we derived. If j is less, so j is playing the whole, the, the whole of uh, y here. So this would be less than j 3 plus 1 over m j minus 1, divided by whatever we got there, which is, um, whatever we got there, Okay, so what I want to do is just replace by that. So once, once I replace, I get 3 to the j. I get the log on base 2. And I get the inverse, so I get multiplication here. For any n. For any given n, we do have this. Okay? Now, what I want is to bound... Uh, uh, J. Okay, so what I want to do is to um, multiply both sides and get something. So I can already divide this by this. 
So let me rearrange this thing. So we have J, and we have here um, three, um, and we have here um, one plus one over three M to the J, and we have here also okay, that QN plus QN plus one, and in here we will have an extra that I didn't put here, and we also have a log two. So we then we conclude that uh, J is greater than, let's multiply both sides, we get M, we get three plus one over M, we get the log two, we get, um, and then we get division by this, so then we get, we get this, and then we get this uh, to the minus one, so we get one plus one over three M minus J. Okay, so just rearranging things. And then what bound we're gonna do is the following, that, uh, yeah, so this thing that the bound we're going to use here is that 1 plus uh, 1 over 3m minus j is actually greater or equal than 1 minus j over 3m. Okay? And you can, you can show this as a problem if you wish. Uh, okay? Um, Okay, well, I'll, leave you, I'll leave this as a problem for you. So, using that bound, um, and, and just throwing away this 1 over m here, you get 3 log 2m divided by qn plus qn plus 1 times 1 minus uh, g over 3m. And now we can solve this equation. Now j, j is greater than, uh, that implies that j is greater than this. So now you can solve this equation. So if you, so if you call this right hand side as a minus, so this is the a, and then, then this is a over 3m j, you can solve the equation and you conclude that j is greater than a divided by 1 plus a over 3m, which is 3m a divided by 3m plus a. Uh, well, no, maybe, maybe we should just write it as before. And then let, let's just replace what capital A is. Capital A is just this guy here, which is, oh, I shouldn't write the, this thing. Is 3m times log 2. So it's 3m log 2. And then we have division in both of these things. So this guy would be then uh, qn plus qn plus 1 and without the 3m here. So just plus log 2. And that's exactly the term we wanted to put in the term. So that finishes the theorem. Okay, so we, we, we proved that uh, j has to be greater than, actually, j is just the max for all n greater or equal than zero of the minimum between these two quantities, qn and this guy here. Now suppose you want to show that uh, a cycle other than the trivial one, the, uh, the one you can only exist if uh, the length of the cycle is very large. So what you can do is to show that the collapse conjecture is true up to a very large number, let's say capital N. So if you start from one to capital N, you always goes back, you always go always go back to one. 
So that means that if m is the minimal element of a cycle other than trivial one, m has to be larger than this very big number, capital N. Okay? So that means that uh, g has to be greater than the max of over all n over the minimum of this, this quantity, but with m replaced by this very large number. So that would give us a lower bound on the cycle, and the lower bound would be big because m, uh, m would, re would be placed, re replaced by a very large number. But before we finish, I actually didn't show that this j, uh, um, uh, so this proof here is for the speed up collapse map. And the statement I did was for the collapse map, okay? But it's just a realization uh, that you have to do to make it work for the collapse map. Because if m is the minimal element in the orbit uh, uh, for the collapse map, that minimal element has to be odd, otherwise it could divide by 2, okay? So if you start with m, an odd number, uh, and it is the minimal element, you iterate the, the collapse map and it gets back to m at some point, then the length of the orbit would definitely be just less than the length of the orbit if you use the speed up collapse map. Okay, so you would get a larger j, but this 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 larger j is in any case bounded by below from by this quantity with the same m because m has to be odd, so you can use move math without having to worry about it. So in the end, you get the same bound, and that actually finishes uh, the proof. So, I hope you enjoyed this class, and I'll see you next class.